Uh, News Nation special correspondent uh, Ross Coldhart, who's um, also done extensive reporting on UFOs, much of which we've seen here on News Nation. So pick up, Ross, if you can, for where Brian left off and what you think about this specific um, report about the CIA office. Okay, so the office of, oh, firstly, good day, Connell. Mm -hmm. the, the office of global access is the office, I'm told, where yeah. this is all happening. The, you've got to have an office to coordinate the retrieval of these craft. And I, I know a lot of people out there still think this is all science fiction. But uh, since we did the Grush interview a few months ago, I've just got more solid with intelligence sources who are telling me that the entire operation is and has long been run out of the CIA and the OGA, the Office of Global Access, is where it's happening. The only um, issue that I take issue with in the uh, Daily Mail report is that it's not just nine craft. I'm told that the United States is in possession of far more than nine craft, not all of them intact. And whilst this might all sound incredible, uh, what I can also reveal is that, yes, there are JSOC operators, Special Operations Command operators, mainly recruited from the... Um, the US Air Force Special Forces who are involved in these retrieval teams. And uh, it's a very active and ongoing operation. May I ask you one specific question about the term non-human? So UFO would be unidentified flying object, right? So these are supposedly operated by quote unquote non-humans. How do we know that? Because we have recovered, and again, this is on the basis of what I'm being told by multiple sources in the intelligence community, very senior sources who know what they're talking about, we have recovered what uh, David Grush re euphemistically referred to as biologics, alien bodies, non-human bodies. And I, I think we're getting very close, Connell, to a point where the US government is going to have to start becoming more candid with the American people, because the issue behind this Daily Mail story, in my view, is the risk of catastrophic disclosure, the, the risk that if the government isn't more open with the people, if the Congress continues to allow this story to be suppressed by sections of the defence aerospace community, that Frankly, I, I do think are quite legitimately protecting or trying to protect what might be their intellectual property, i.e. these recovered craft that the US government has entrusted them to try and reverse engineer. If that cover-up continues, there's going to be an increasing risk of these kind of catastrophic disclosures. And I think it's incumbent on the president and members of the executive to start thinking seriously, because I know that there are people in the intelligence community who are very frustrated that knowledge of technologies, of other life forms, intelligent life forms, are being improperly withheld from the knowledge of the Congress and the American people. So you think they know this for a fact, that it's not, that in other words, that they're, they're, they're actually hiding something explicitly, that they, that they have the evidence. You're convinced of that from the work you've done? It's not just convinced. I am absolutely certain you can take it to the bank. Too many very senior intelligence and defence sources have said this to me now. The only issue it really is for people to start thinking rationally about the implications of why four senior Republican politicians are trying to oppose legislation which would force the disclosure of something that consistently the Pentagon is trying to give the American people the impression doesn't exist. Why is it, if there is nothing to hide, why is it, if there is no evidence, no credible evidence of a non-human intelligence, why are very senior Republican politicians now changing the tune from what was a bipartisan effort to try to amend sections of the so-called Schumer um, UAP Disclosure Act, which would allow revelations to be made to the, to the American people about what the government really does know about UAPs. Aren't you open to some other explanation, for example, that there could be um, you know, a foreign military, for example, that's using classified or, or that, you know, our government has found out about the actions of a foreign military, but those actions are classified and there's some reason it can't be disclosed. And aren't there other explanations besides non-human life? There, there are. No, there are, sir. And um, obviously the subject of the possibility that this is foreign adversary technology has been canvassed with senior people. And in fact, defence officials, this has largely escaped the scrutiny of legacy media, which is ignoring this story. As you quite rightly point out, mm -hmm. News Nation has perhaps solely among networks run with this issue. 
The simple fact is that the government has made it very clear in statements to the Pentagon and in evidence that this is not known rival foreign adversary technology. It's not China. It's not Russia. It's something else. And, and this is the implication of what we're dealing with. And that's why there has been, until very recently, a bipartisan effort in the Congress, a laudable bipartisan effort, which is quite rare in the Congress these days, right. to see a move for UAP disclosure. And that was pushed by the uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and supported by Republicans such as Senator Marco Rubio. And now for essentially, I suspect, reasons of expedience to do with heavy duty funding from the Defence Aerospace Lobby, key Republicans are now moving to try and block sections of the Schumer legislation, notably the eminent domain section that would allow confiscation of any NHI technology. And Connell, you have to ask yourself, mm -hmm. if this is all nonsense, why would somebody of the incredible reputation and seniority of Chuck Schumer and Marco Rubio, why would they associate themselves with legislation that specifically talks over 20 times about NHI, non-human intelligence technology? Congress knows something from private hearings. It's aware of evidence, not just from David Grush, but from multiple witnesses, and it's determined to get to the truth, even if certain politicians try to frustrate efforts to give the public the information it deserves. Well, our thanks to you, Ross. As, uh, as always, Ross Coldhart has done a lot of work on this subject, and much of which has been seen here on News Nation. Thanks for joining us tonight.